woman does not do that. This woman is just the out, uh, opposite. She is both sneaky and loud. She wants to get in his face. She wants him to sin. She is defiant or rebellious. Her feet never stay at home. Uh, back in chapter 6, we have read about feet that rush to do evil. And it seems like her feet are that way as well. Again, all parts of her are involved in this, just like all parts of him were involved in this. She takes to the streets and the squares and offers her teaching. <laughs> you know, it's just like wisdom stood on the street corners and called out with wisdom. She is doing exactly the same thing, except she's not standing on the street corners. She's hiding behind doors. She is sitting there in the corner uh, in the dark near the street where the young man is wandering. She's paying attention to him. She's after him uh, as he was walking towards her house, uh, saying that they're both making bad decisions uh, in this uh, scenario. The woman says that she's been making preparations at home. She's been busy. She's been thinking about this. Uh, and she offers three enticements uh, to him. The first enticement is a great meal. In those days, uh, 3,000 years ago, they didn't eat a lot of meat. Uh, and it's interesting that she has a sacrificial meat meal prepared. And oftentimes the only meat they got was when they had sacrificed. And they were allowed to take some of the meat and to go eat it. And she is taking a church meal. <laughs> she is taking the leftovers from church potluck and saying, hey, come over. This is what she's doing. Um... She's got this all ready for him to go. She wants the young man to join him in this feast, but little does he know that she is, he is the next sacrifice. He is the next target. Just like she has sacrificed uh, a lamb for this meal, she is going to sacrifice him too and destroy his life. She promises a bed made delightful with perfumes and, and sweet-smelling spices. Both the linens and the spices say that this woman has been well, well taken care of. They might also hint that there's some culpability on the husband's part. He has been away from home. And as we have looked at it in the book of Proverbs, staying home is a good thing. Okay, Minding your own business is a good thing. Staying in your house is a good thing. Not minding your neighbor's thing is, is minding your neighbor's is a, is a problem. Well, he has done good things, but he hasn't been home. You know, and just because you've given your wife or your, your situation, uh, you know, money doesn't mean that you've been doing what you've been asked to do. Most of her temptations are words. Let's, uh, and he, she goes on to say, let's drink deep of the love until morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. She suggests to him what uh, she wants to have done. Till morning is meant to, to say, hey, let's enjoy ourselves all night long. But it also means, it could also suggest, that this is only a temporary pleasure. And that's something also that the book of Proverbs has been against. Uh, if we only look at what's going to happen temporarily, and not what the long-term results of that behavior are, we are in trouble. And so he says, yeah, it's only going to last till morning, but it's only going to last till morning, and then all kinds of problems will arise. If we f don't follow God's morality, all kinds of problems will arise when morning happens. It really is an impoverished definition of love, it seems like to me. Yeah, we're going to have some fun for the night, but it lacks any, any relationship. It lacks any commitment. It lacks all those things that make sexual love enjoyable and pleasurable and lasting and fruitful. Any kind of commitment, it's only there for the night. The woman also reports that her husband has gone away for a long time, probably to assure the young man that he's going to be safe, that he's not going to come barging in. You know, and so, yeah, come on, I've got food, I've got a bed, I've got, you know, the husband's gone, and so you can rest assured that, that uh, we're going to have a good time. Now, although the victim may worry about the husband, readers already know that the woman is actually the problem. That more or less lines up with what um, with what temptation is all about rather than what the scenario is all about. Because in this world, temptation is hunting your life and temptation is going to get you. In the scenario, I'm not quite sure how it fits. But she is the one who stalks his life. 
She is the one who will kill him, uh, along with his own decision. It's interesting that the woman doesn't even call this, the man of her house her husband or my man. He is literally the man, not in his house. Again, he is not at home taking care of business the way he should. And this key word house suggests that the trouble comes because he's not at home. He's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. He is not taking care of the relationship that he has, the covenant, the commitments that he has. He is away. And so there is some culpability upon his part. The young man is out walking. He's not at home where he belongs. She does not stay at her house where she belongs. And the husband is not at his home where he belongs. Nobody is where they belong. And so trouble arises. Book of Proverbs says, take care of your own commitments. Take care of the wife of your youth. Take care of your responsibility. Don't worry about everybody else. Take care of your own home. And so this simple young man, this, this fool, this man who makes bad choices is going to be slain. With persuasive words, she leads him astray. Literally, these persuasive words is much teaching. You know, we spend a lot of time teaching, but evil spends a lot of time teaching as well. You know, all the things we, we watch that are immoral, all the things that we take in that are immoral, they're all teaching us so that we make a choice. It's not just something that we fall into. It's not just something accidental. It is a choice because of the much teaching. We have to follow after the teaching of God. The teacher's comparison shows that animals don't know the fate that's going to befall them. You know, he is led like a sheep to the slaughter, like a, like a chicken to get his head cut off, you know, and doesn't know what he's running around for. In the same way, that young man has allowed empty words to deceive him and take him. Another sacrificial word. And finally, we have this second call to attention. As the author wants the, the young men, the people of this world, and it includes everyone, uh, to, fall, to stay away from temptation and to watch out for uh, evil. She says, the, 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 Psalm, the proverb says, my son, widening it out. It's not just the one person that the dad is talking to or the mom is talking to. It's all of us need to pay attention to this. You can hear the words of emphasis in the, in, the, in the words. Listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. You know, it's a matter of who you're listening to. It's a matter of what you're being taught and who's teaching you and who are you going to make a choice and whether you have a heart that's going to follow after God. Are you going to listen to God's voice? And it says, again, directs his teaching at the heart, the seat of intentions. This is where the Old Testament thinks we make choices. And so he says, it's your choice that matters. It's not how you feel about this thing. It is a choice that you're making, and you have been taught your heart to think a certain way and to make certain choices. And if the heart stays fixed, the feet will also follow. If the heart's on the right path, the feet are going to follow along right. I don't know how you'd walk that way. But, you know, you could. Where the heart goes, the feet are going to follow. The teacher adds that the young man is not a single casualty. Many are her victims. Now, this applies not only to the case of this young man and in, in his adulterous relationship, but it applies to all sin. And there are all kinds of casualties to sin. And we need to understand that uh, in our lives. And then the final image that, she, that the teacher wants to leave in her son mind is, son's mind is this highway to hell. This is where it's going to end up. Now, you know, when I type that word in, highway to hell, I got all kinds of nice images uh, because it's a really popular song. And I think the really popular song is trying to teach us, oh, no, that's not a bad thing. Uh, it's just where we're all going and we're going to have fun on the way. You know, but it is not fun in hell. And so he says, stay away from there. This chapter brings together the metaphors of house and way and darkness and most importantly, trap. Because temptation and sin of all kinds is a trap that we can easily get snared into. You know your weaknesses. You know my weaknesses. We get trapped and we need to have a heart that listens to God. We have to recognize that some words are too good to be true. You can put 50 cents in that box all day, and you're going to get words that are too good to be true. We need to stay away from them. 
whether they are in financial thing, whether they are in a sexual nature, whether they are